Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another video. Uh, I think this one is the first video I record uh, this year because probably I uh, publish another video this year. Not quite sure, but I had recorded uh, last year. So happy new year to, to everyone. And I'd like to thank you guys, especially the students that uh, applied for my course last year. Uh, unfortunately, I had to close uh, the selling last year because I was not prepared enough uh, for the volume of students that apply for my course. So now uh, it's all set. I'm very well prepared for like the new class. Um, it's I'm just opening the selling right now. So you can go to my website, um, artvisual.com uh, and apply for the course uh, this year. Okay, so the good thing about this opening today is that for the next 10 days, uh, this same course that was available last year is now available for $299. So it's a big promotion uh, and it's not going to last forever. So just for 10 days. So if you want this, this course, guys, now I think this opportunity uh, just show up. So go there and apply for the course. Uh, you're going to like it a lot. I'm going to just tell a little bit, discuss a little bit about the course before we uh, jump on the 10 tips about optimization. Okay, so the first thing about this course that I'd like to uh, highlight here is that you're going to learn the fundamentals of how to set up a light, how to texture an object very well, uh, also how to place uh, your camera in the right position, um, on the right subject, how to use depth of field, um, how to use uh, all the parameters that Octane has um, inside Blender. Uh, sometimes when like a beginner start using like Blender Octane, uh, they see a lot of different uh, commands, a lot of a lot of different um, properties, a lot of different uh, stuff in Octane that scares them and you don't need to to be afraid of uh blender octane it's actually very easy to understand uh actually you don't need to do anything when you start like using blender octane you just need to put your your uh create your object create your scene and start rendering it but uh knowing all those properties all those values uh this is going to help you to optimize is even like better than we are going to talk later on on this on this uh on this video and also knowing the parameters of uh octane blender uh, uh you'll be able to solve uh the problems uh by yourself so this is definitely a good thing and this is definitely uh something that i always uh notice when i record my videos and questions that i receive is that people are not quite familiar with octane and this is what i'm going to teach you to solve problems uh by yourselves and knowing exactly what you are doing also a very nice thing about this course is that uh you have access to a discord channel and this discord channel is just for questions um questions regard uh regarding the the course of course and i'll be planning to also make lives in there to clarify all those questions when it's necessary uh you'll be able to talk to other students uh over there i will be there and I think this is like a huge thing about this course as well, okay? Another thing to keep in mind about this course, uh, especially if you're not familiar with the English language, uh, we have like subtitles for Portuguese, Spanish, French, Korean, Russian, and Chinese, okay? So this is uh, a good thing. Um, so you'll be able to understand uh, the entire course. Of course, you have like questions, the Discord channel will be there, and I'll be there as well. So another point is I'm not quite sure like for how long uh, I will keep the course opening. Uh, so this is like an opportunity again for you guys to go there and apply for it. Um, otherwise, uh, if in some case I, I decide to close it, you have to wait like for the, for the next class. Okay, so keep it in mind. 
Okay, guys, so thank you so much. Um, so let's get started on the 10 tips uh, about optimization. This is a very important uh, video, I think, because uh, most of the time, especially like in Facebook groups, uh, here in my channel as well, a lot of people ask about, about it, how to optimize like the scenes. And this is definitely something that I think uh, you guys need to know. So let's take a look. Okay, guys, so let's get started on these uh, 10 tips to optimize your render. So the first one here in my list uh, is textures. So usually people try to use uh, the high resolution texture in their renders. Uh, this is definitely a good thing but it will definitely also increase your render times. Also, the loading of your scene will increase as well. And my recommendation on this point here is not to use uh, high resolution textures on objects that are far away from camera, but instead uh, use it on objects that are very close to the camera because objects that are far away from camera they usually are abstraction uh, in your image and at the end of the day what really matters is the objects that are in focus so the main subject those objects need to be well textured uh, so then you can spend a little bit more time texture it well uh, also find good resolution textures to apply on it and don't worry too much about uh, the rest of the textures okay so this is definitely a good tip and i do it a lot on my renders uh not just for personal projects but also in my company okay okay so the second tip is don't use displacement on every object that you put on your scene and i think that the main mistake here is is those uh scene that have um displacement everywhere so you don't need to use displacement everywhere. The same, the same thing that we applied for textures before. Uh, if you need to use displacement, only use displacement on objects that are close to the camera. And that is really necessary to use. Otherwise, don't use it. You can use normal maps that sometimes uh, works very well. Of course, if you see that uh, for some reason it's not working, you, you need to apply displacement to try to uh, improve the quality of the, the object, but try to avoid it as much as possible. All right. Okay. So the third tip is, uh, don't use roughness map on all objects on your scene. Okay. So, okay. So Jonathan, why I, I shouldn't use, uh, roughness on, on the maps in my scene. And the reason is because, um, when the render starts, it's going to take longer to calculate the entire maps on your on your uh, on your scene uh, and all those objects if they have um, a roughness applied to it then the render engine needs to calculate each map each uh, each object so it's definitely it's going to uh, increase your render time as well so again uh, the same thing applies here for cameras so you need to apply this this these maps only uh, on objects close to the camera. And of course, if you need to make, for example, a close up of the arm on, on the arm of the armchair, uh, definitely you need to apply a roughness on it. Uh, what I'm saying here is that uh, you don't need to apply like roughness map on all objects on your scene, especially for those that are far away from camera again. Okay, so this is important, guys. Um, I know that to make a uh, realistic render is necessary to have details, but the details are only noticeable on objects that are in front of the camera. Objects that are far away from camera, people doesn't care about that. And they probably, they even notice that um, there are, for example, I don't know, a dusty on, on the table, like on objects, I don't know, three, four, five meters far away from camera. So this is something to keep in mind again. Okay, so the fourth chip um, is good models, 3D models. Okay, so nowadays I know it's easier to buy models online instead of like doing by yourselves uh, the models, right? But um, you need to 
pay attention on the models you are buying, uh, especially when you put it on your scene. You need to, to see if the models uh, are in good resolution, uh, the mesh are clean, and also there is no subdivision applied to it. And if there is any subdivision applied to the model, if it's necessary to remove the subdivision, you need to remove it. Sometimes a chair comes with thousands and thousands and thousands of polygons uh, and this is definitely something that's going to uh, increase your render time okay a lot and also the loading uh, of your scene as well okay so this is very important guys um, don't buy models and just like put them on your scene buy the models of course you need them but uh, look at them uh, open it uh, see if the mesh is clean uh, if it's not clean, you need to clean this up because at the end of the day, <laughs> you're going to have uh, a slow render um, and this can be a problem for you. And okay, so the fifth tip here is instance your objects, but of course you need to instance the only objects that are the same, right? So for example, here I have like my guy with the chair and usually when we um, duplicate objects we usually press shift D to duplicate objects right so instead uh, of duplicating objects pressing shift D you need to duplicate it pressing alt D okay so like this you're going to have an instance of this same object here so this is very healthy for Octane because Octane uh, understand when you instance an object that it doesn't need to calculate uh, the mesh of this object. So, for example, if you want to uh, duplicate, I don't know, a thousand times this um, this object over here. Let me do that. Uh, Alt D. If, if you press Alt D and Shift R, it's going to duplicate several times uh, in the same position. Okay, if you, for example, um, duplicate it uh, one meter uh, apart from each other, it's going to replicate the same um, position for the other objects pressing shift R. Okay, so, so let's say that all these objects here, I don't know, um, have thousands and thousands of, um, of polygons. Uh, what Octane is going to do is, Octane is just going to calculate the first object. The other objects, is not going to be calculated. So the sixth tip here is use area lights instead of HDRIs. And this is very noticeable. Uh, you're going to see that you can reduce your render time more than 60% on like most of your renders. And not just area lights, but uh, you can replace um, HDRIs for the daylight system uh, for an octane so you're going to see that it's going you, you are going to render like very fast uh faster than you are used to uh using hdis okay so this is a very important tip uh it's of course sometimes it's necessary to use because you have to you need to achieve i don't know a specific uh light mood uh with specific colors on your scene on your exterior scenes but uh try to avoid it uh when um, it's apply when you, you can do that. Okay. And keep talking about lighting. Uh, the seventh tip here is not to use, uh, too many lights on your scene. Try to avoid it. Uh, use only the necessary lights, uh, on your scene. Okay. So the three point lights, uh, like to light an, an interior, um, on daylight system to light an exterior. But don't go beyond that. Don't uh, start like placing a lot of different lights, trying to achieve the best result possible. This is not uh, how to achieve uh, good lighting. A good lighting is achieved with less lighting uh, and good knowledge where to place it. Okay, so keep it in mind. Okay, so the eighth tip here is hide layers that are not necessary. Um, especially if you are working on big projects um, and let's say that you have uh, a house where um, this house has 
uh, a dining room, um, kitchen, a bathroom, and you have like all those props around it. And you want to make a render of the dining room only. Uh, you don't need to keep all those layers here. Uh, turn it on. You can turn those off. So uh, in my course, I explain how I, I do that, but I'm going to, to, to show you here. Uh, when I work on big projects, I usually um, create a layer for each, uh, each one of the space, the environments that I have. So for example, a layer for um, a kitchen, a layer for bathrooms, layer for dining rooms, layer for, I don't know, exterior layers. So I have all those uh, separated and it's easy to turn uh, them off or turn them on. So when I want to make um, a render of the dining room, I just turn off the other, uh, the other layer. So this is definitely going to speed up your renders. Okay, so the ninth tip here is denoiser. So use it. Um, the denoiser from Octane, it's pretty good. It's I think it's one of the best ones I, I ever used before. Okay, so use it. Of course, you don't need to uh, exaggerate on the values, but uh, you can work with like good blend values, like around 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and you don't need to increase too much your render samples, your preview samples over here, okay, or max samples. Um, so this is another thing. It's definitely going to speed up your renders, so you don't need to wait um, too long to finish or wrap up your, your render, okay? So let's go to the next one and last one, actually. And the last one is out of core. So out of core, for those uh, who don't know, it's this guy over here, Octane out of core. Okay, so basically I usually um, keep this guy over here on for like all my renders. So when I save my Blender preset over here, startup file, uh, I save it uh, with this Octane out of core turned on. And the reason I did that is just like not to forget to turn the to turn this guy on. This guy it's very important, especially for scenes that are very heavy. This guy over here helps a lot uh, to load the scene. So if you are having like loading problems uh, with your scene, definitely you have to turn this on. And here you can limit the um, amount of memory that um, Octane is going to take from your memory. So here it's taking like 4K, but I think in this computer I have 32, uh, 32K, so I, I could increase it, I don't know, to 22K uh, easily. And I like can rent, I can load any kind of scene in my PC here, okay? So this is definitely um, one of the best things about Octane, um, and you can render like any kind of scene. Okay, so this is a good thing. Of course, um, this like when you turn this on, uh, if you're having problem and you turn this on, it means that you are having definitely a heavy scene. Uh, be careful, like analyze all objects you have on your scene, analyze all the textures you have on your scene. Try to reduce like the um, the amount of polygons that the object has. Also, the um, texture try to rescale the textures to have um, a, a, a faster loading as well. So all those um, tips that we discussed here, it's going to help you guys to achieve the best uh, result and best render at the end of the day. Okay, so thank you so much. And let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'll be glad to answer and see you in the next video.